Ukrainian forces have officially acknowledged the use of Western missile systems in an offensive operation on Russian territory, reports the Times. The Times notes that the Ukrainian armed forces have confirmed the use of American HIMARS rocket systems to destroy bridges, pontoons and engineering equipment belonging to Russian troops in the Kursk region. The report recalls that Ukrainian forces previously demolished all three bridges across the Sim River, which connected Russian-controlled areas with supply routes. As a result of these strikes, up to 3,000 enemy soldiers were trapped and military engineers were forced to construct pontoon crossings. The Times also highlighted that Russian military bloggers and international journalists have identified British, American and Italian tanks and armoured vehicles used during the assault. According to the Times, the President of Ukraine, Volodymyr Zelensky, recently dismissed concerns from Western allies about the potential consequences of using Western weapons against Russian territory. He advocated for removing all restrictions on the use of such arms. Additionally, he confirmed that Ukraine had kept its allies unaware of the cross-border offensive, anticipating that they would veto any operations that breached Russia's most stringent red lines. Zelensky also noted that Russian President Vladimir Putin has not followed through on his threats of retaliation against NATO, indicating their lack of credibility. The President also urged the West to lift restrictions on the use of long-range weapons for strikes on Russian rear areas, the Times reports. Two weeks ago, Ukrainian forces launched an offensive operation in the Kursk region. The objective is to create a buffer zone to halt attacks on the border and draw enemy forces away from the front in Ukraine. Ukrainian special forces have confirmed that they have used HIMARS systems to destroy several bridges and Russian pontoon crossings in the Kursk region. In the past two weeks, Ukrainian forces have captured a significant number of Russian soldiers. The Washington Post wrote that in 10 days, more than 300 Russian prisoners of war from the Kursk region were sent to one of the Ukrainian prisons. The security service of Ukraine also conducted a special operation in which 102 Russian soldiers were captured in one day. Former First Lady Michelle Obama called Vice President Kamala Harris one of the most qualified people ever to seek the office of the presidency and went after former President Donald Trump in a speech met with an enthusiastic reaction at the Democratic National Convention. She took the stage in her hometown to remind voters of a feeling they had during her husband's campaign for president. Her speeches helped propel her husband, Barack Obama, to two consecutive terms, and who was widely spoken of as a potential presidential candidate herself, particularly early this year as the Democrats struggled to rally behind a single nominee to replace Joe Biden. And in Chicago she brought all of that considerable charisma to bear, and the measure of her popularity was underlined by receiving a welcome bigger than that which greeted Mr. Obama in his hometown. Among the highlights of Obama's speech was her leaning into Kamala Harris's background, highlighting her multiracial origin as the embodiment of stories we speak about in this country. Her story is your story. It is my story, she said, in response to jibes by Donald Trump. For years Trump did everything to make people fear us. His narrow view of the world made him feel threatened by two highly successful and educated people who happen to be black. Who is going to tell him the job he is seeking is now one of those black jobs, she said accusing Trump of ugly, misogynistic, and racist lies. Kamala Harris is more than ready for this moment, Obama said on the Democratic National Convention stage. She is one of the most qualified people ever to seek the office of the presidency. And she is one of the most dignified a tribute to her mother, to my mother and probably to your mother too, the embodiment of the stories we tell ourselves about this country. Her story is your story, it's my story. It's the story of the vast majority of Americans trying to build a better life. As reactions to Obama's speech poured in on social media, many noted that the former first lady appeared to have pivoted away from the soaring rhetoric she used when she coined the slogan, when they go low, we go high, during the 2016 Democratic National Convention. 
un unfortunately, we know what comes next. We know folks are going to do everything they can to distort her truth. My husband and I sadly know a little something about this. For years, Donald Trump did everything in his power to try to make people fear us. See, his, his limited, narrow view of the world made him feel threatened by the existence of two hardworking, highly educated, successful people who happen to be black. I, I, I want to know. I want to know. Who's going to tell him? Who's going to tell him that the job he's currently seeking might just be one of those black jobs?